everybody. Felicitations. It's me, Felicia Day, and this is my podcast, kind of. Okay, here's the deal. Listen, I didn't do a lot of work this week to get a guest. <laughs> As my guest will attest, wasn't planned too far in advance, but I promised you guys a guest, and I got it. And the reason why I didn't get a guest was I was so intimidated by the tech, but then I thought I figured it out. So I was using, I'm using StreamYard to stream just talking head stuff. But then I was like, oh, I can use this other thing called cloud feed. It's not cloud stream because cloud stream is, uh, if you look at cloudstream.com, it's an enema company. So <laughs> anyway, so I have my friend Jonah Ray here. Jonah Ray Rodriguez. Hey. Hey. Hello. How's it so going? Thank you. And, you know, thank you so much for uh, scheduling around this in advance. You know, it's uh, it, I had to move a lot of stuff around. Uh, mm -hmm, I was, mm -hmm. I'd probably I'd probably be taking one of my many naps right now if it wasn't for this. So you know, I've never spoken to enough, as many adults taking naps as I have in the last two weeks. I think we've all just got this as uh, we've basically just got the covids, <laughs> yeah. mental covids. Yeah, I think I think it, you know I think more people. I think we should take more naps as a as a country as a culture. I think, uh, you know, Spain does it, and that seems they seem to have a good time. Have you been to Spain, Jonah? N never once. Really? <laughs> no. Okay, so you're talking ignorantly about a culture you have no idea about. <laughs> I've read books. I've heard the term siesta. These are things that I know, like, uh, and I know they they eat dinner late. I that's they all. do eat dinner late. I've been yeah. three times, so I'm an expert on their oh, culture. Oh, yes. Yeah, please yeah. tell me, please tell me, white woman, about the culture. <laughs> Of, of the, the Castellano. Castellano? Ooh. Um, ooh. Mm -hmm. no, no, I've been to Barcelona three times and Granada and Seville. Oh, I'm That's sorry. It. Do you mean Barcelona? Barcelona. Oh, okay. And yeah. Ibiza? Yes. Ibiza. Oh, I would love to go to Ibiza. Would yeah, that be you amazing? Love, you love raves. That's love one thing I know about you. You love, you love heavy duty raving, a <laughs> plur, peace, love, unity, respect, glow sticks. <laughs> Why do they, the glow sticks have names on them? Is that what? I don't know. It's, it's like you know, you got to name your glow stick. Oh, so you, you can, So you can mourn it when it dies slowly. Oh, it's yeah. so sad when they go out because it's like you're just trash. Here, live for a thousand <laughs> years in a dump. You're just a you're just a mildly glowing chemical. Oh God! Here, mm. ruin some groundwater. Kill a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was totally worth it. Yeah, uh, that was a good. That was a good twenty minutes of fun. Oh boy. Mm. Um. So. Basically, what I do, okay, so I want to just tell the audience that the reluctance that I've had about having guests, not only was the tech side, but like, Jonah, I don't know if you're familiar with my auspicious, many heralded, many heard podcast, but I essentially just ran into a microphone for about an hour alone and answer questions about myself a lot. Oh, wow. You're, so you're like the female Bill Burr, essentially. <laughs> you know what? Bill Burr actually was the model for felicitations because years ago, people were like, start a podcast, just do it. And I'm like, I don't really have a subject I want to talk about. I just had a baby. I don't care about anything right now. I just want to lay down and never get up. Yeah. But then people are like, well, you need to start one anyway. So I was like, well, who's doing something alone? And it was mm. Bill Burr. Does he still do it? I think he still does it. I think it's the, the Monday morning podcast, right? Yeah, Jonah? exactly. And yeah. I listened to half of one one time and I was like, well, he does. <laughs> well, so, you know, that's I like I like a podcast that doesn't need a, a guest because that's like such a stressful thing. I know to, you kind of wear out your welcome with your friends mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. or or you just like, you know, you're kind of like just then you're you don't want to do it. It's so much work. You, you start asking people like with the guys that they might like bring in an audience yeah, you know, and then you're as opposed like, to me having me on, you'll lose some of your audience. Listen, whoever leaves because of you, you're just come back later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think people are really, really excited about. I mean, you weren't. I promise, I didn't ask no one else. I there was nobody else who was like, can't do it. Okay, so you were mm -hmm. number on my list. There was a. Uh, I did think that perhaps the chances where you would be available, but yeah, did I you, did. Did, did you hear? Did you hear the like? It's like you're doing a lot of Freudian slips where you're just like you're like I didn't ask no one else. You oh, were I said a, that? yeah. And then you said and then you said you were a number on my list. <laughs> you oh, didn't no. even say it, what number. You... No, I promise you were the only person I asked. I Was... promise you. Okay, so, so... you want to look at my text? I have a text from a person who has a rug that I cleaned and there it's ready. <laughs> and then I have you, and I have a, a text from the contractor who. Wanted to know something about tile. And then I have a million sure. Google verification codes and bank verification codes because 
I spend all day trying to figure out my passwords places. Well, once you get the tech all set up, I'm sure, uh, you know, that's when you'll ask Will Wheaton. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, four or five people might complain about the quality of this because I'm just going to rip the audio off the video. And that's all you get, listeners. I'm so sorry. But people... In these, in these yeah. times? In these times? What do, what, do, what do people want? What do you want? You want professional podcasts? There are only 8 million of them. Only here mm -hmm. you can get unprofessionalism and a semi-permanent-ish, you know, angle on something. So... <laughs> I don't I'm know. even. I might be starting a, a, a new one myself. No, what happened? No, no. Let's okay. Let's back it up, you guys. Somebody might not know Jonah Ray. Mm. Okay, if you don't know Jonah Ray, he is an amazing uh, comedian. He also starred in Mystery Science Theater 3000 with me. He had his own show that was Anthony Bourdain esque, which Anthony Bourdain was even in mm -hmm. at one point. Um, you had a guest star on a sitcom one time. <laughs> You didn't do any. You don't know me at all, do you? I, this is see. This is what I've never had a guest before. I just yeah. I don't I don't know how to intro people. I know I know you amongst the confines of my little small world. What we did, Puka okay. lives together. We did a we did a movie on Hulu together. Exactly. Uh, we 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 know each other because we're we're co stars. We're co stars exactly. Uh, people from the chat say that they knew you from Tabletop. So tabletop, that was, that was a very good time. That was crazy. Cause that was, I, you know, those things are huge. The tabletop yeah. show. Like, Oh, I know. I like was, you know, it was Am just I like, it was just, for five it was like, you know, our friend Will just going to say, Hey, I'm doing this tabletop like web thing. And you kind of, you just do stuff because you're, you know, want to have fun with your friends. And exactly. then it comes up a lot. Like we're like, you know, the characters I played are people that like you know they're, they're like oh it's, that's one of my favorite characters of yours so i was like oh the thing i came up with like right when we started playing <laughs> and haven't thought of since oh i really should i should try less more well you know my idea had had i had a little more room during making that show there was um there was a, a doctor character that jeff lewis uh no there was a doctor character that was that i made up during one of the games and uh what was it doctor guys what was the name dr hannah and so it was a zombie invasion game, but I just made one of the characters just be a zombie in the veterinary clinic and just eat bad egg salad sandwiches the whole time. <laughs> and so I wanted to more than anything to do like a spinoff series starring Jeff Lewis as Dr. Hannah, just in the small thing. There's apocalypse ca happening outside and he's like reading old good housekeeping. <laughs> and nobody would go at the company would go with it. And then, I, I say that a lot, and then I look back, and I'm like, it was my company. Why did I just tell people what was going to go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that, yeah. in in that kind of part of the fun of having your own company. You're like, you it get to make fun. the thing you want to make. It wasn't fun. <laughs> it being wasn't the boss, fun. being the boss, it's no fun. It's it fun. isn't, is it? Did you have that problem when you were doing um your Hidden, your show, Hidden America, right? Yeah, Hidden. you know, like Hidden America was going to be my first thing that was like me. It was my thing. Like, you know, I, I'd been doing the Nerdist podcast and I would like wrote on other shows and I had the yeah. meltdown with Kumel Nanjiani and like mm -hmm. um, this was going to be my first thing. So I was stressed, like incredibly stressed out the like entire time because I was just like, I was like, this is, I, it's like, cause it's, it was totally my voice. And yeah. then, you know, and then just like, but you're I putting had, yourself out there, but you're also a boss. You not only the creative person, but you're like worried where lunch is going to come from. Mm -hmm. It's really terrible. And it brings out the worst in you. Right. Yeah. It's funny. Like uh, how much, like, it's like, I was just looking at old pictures. And I was just like, Oh, during that time I gained so much weight because it's yeah. like, it was like we were doing hidden America and meltdown and Mr. Science theater all at the same time. Wow. Uh, uh, I did the that. opposite. I said the opposite of that. There's a there's a video on the Guild channel. Watch the Guild, you guys, where we actually have all of our D&D &D playthroughs. And this weekend, we're actually going to be doing Jackbox games. We have some one-off DMs that are coming in. So uh, Johnny will have to guest on one of that if, if yes, we have uh, some room. It's really fun. Um, but uh, all the D&D &D episodes and all the stuff we do with the Guild is there, you guys. But there is an episode. There is a video I uploaded and I shot it in my shed, which no longer is there because it just recently got torn down. And it was just basically announcing Geek and Sundry. And I looked so haggard. Like you mm. can see my boat, like all the bones and kind of my teeth too. <laughs> yeah. I've never been so skinny and stressed out. And I just look like a, I look like a ghoul. Okay. That's and then there nice, were a lot though, of- to like lose weight when you're stressed. Like, you know, I'm the opposite yeah. way. I, I eat it away. I mean, that's what's quarantine's done to me. Like, I can't fit any of my pants. It has to have some stretch or it's not going, going over this butt right now. So, uh, yeah. So, I guess, I mean, I don't know. It's probably more, neither of them are healthy. And so, stress does weird things to us. 
And I, I don't even know what to tell you. So what, what are you doing lately, Jonah? Because usually, okay, here's the format of my podcast, and I'm going to okay. lead you through it because it's super right. complicated. I usually complain about ants or fleas because mm -hmm. my house is infested with them. I've been doing everything I could to get rid of them. And I just talk about what I did that week, anything interesting. And then I go into stuff where I recommend things that I consumed. And then we do some audience questions. Is that okay for you? That, for you? that all sounds fantastic. Because I haven't texted you back in a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, you did it. I know. I'm so sorry. I did go watch your fundraiser or Deanna's fundraiser, yeah, but I didn't cats. actually respond. It's Can you what, did you do? what was that? And who arranged it? And how cool was that? Uh, Deanna, put, Deanna put that together uh, with uh, she, it was a fun. Yeah, my wife, Deanna Rooney. Also, uh, she also played uh, Dr. Donna St. Fives and uh, MST3K. The Very Gauntlet. fun. Very funny. Um, and uh, and she did a fundraiser uh, for Santa de Or, which is a cat rescue place. They do a lot of catch and release. And um, because of lockdown, like they, um, the catch and release programs were kind of shut down for a while. And mm -hmm. so there was an explosion of homeless kittens. And so they're just like, you know, they did a little fundraiser to help kind of like, you know, feed the kittens, get them into homes and, you know, yeah. and, you know, cover travel costs for people that want to, you know, like, oh, I'll take that kitten. And they Foster, people take yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Deanna did a fundraiser. We had a lot of great comics on it, like Nikki Glazer, Ron Funches, um, you know, and uh, and raised a bunch of money. And she did a great bit where she played like a, she, you know, she dressed in drag as like this dorky guy with a mustache. <laughs> I saw that picture. I was like, what yeah. is going on? She yeah. looks amazing. Yeah. Very hot, man. Very yes. hot. Oh, she's an incredibly uh, handsome fellow, my wife. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, and it was, it was just a blast and it was done with, um, uh, the, uh, uh, it was co-produced with, uh, what's the place called? Um, Dynasty Typewriter, which is a great. Yeah. They're yeah. amazing. They actually mm -hmm. reached out to me and were like, can you do a show for us? I'm like, I do so much on live stream. What, what do I have that's special that I can show your audience? Yeah, no, I'm like, uh, it's like I, me, Baron and Hampton did like a, a little movie riffing thing there. You were doing which, some movie riffing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we were gonna, like, we, were, we called it destroy all movies. And like our whole plan was to just do it, you know, once a month. And then, uh, you know, then live entertainment went away. Okay, so I usually don't look at chat while I'm doing this because um, it is a podcast, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are complaining about your headphones, you, uh, Jonah, because they're very uneven. And oh, so yeah, people, yeah, they're real pissed. Ooh, oh, look yeah, at that. All, they're all tangled up. I know, but you know what? We're not going to change it. So there you go. That looks a little better. That looks now, good. Now it looks like I did a little braid. Yeah, you a little braided up. I'm down. All right. This, this, is what I, this is what I would do if I had a long, stringy beard. <laughs> Cause some people do like I've zoomed with, have you zoomed with friends and you're just like, Whoa, you have let yourself go. You know, Kumail's hair is the longest. Like it's like, we, we hopped on zoom <laughs> the other day to hang out and his hair was taking up most of the, the frame. And I was just does like, like go it, out? does it go out? It goes out. Up? Oh, it goes boy. out and up. And like, uh, it was funny. And it was a very Scott Pilgrim moment. I was like, look at your hair. And he immediately put on a hat. <laughs> I had a friend, my, my friend, Taryn kill him. Do you know Taryn? Yeah, I know Taryn. Um, He's amazing. He actually is streaming on Twitch now. And we did a little Zoom the other day because he was like, what's, you know, uh, what do I do? And I'm like, okay. Um, he had it all down because he's a tech nerd as well. He is, but yeah. I, he has a beard and it is like you could hide some squirrels in there and you would not notice. Like it oh, is wow. full squirrel beard. So, you know, I, I, I bless everybody. Like I can, uh, I could cast no stones. I literally haven't put on a shirt other than like I have a rotation of about seven shirts and this is one of them. And it's starting to get holes in it. I'm like, it's in the back. Who's going to see it, right? Yeah. That's, you look nice. Thank you. This is actually the most unshaven I've been. I've been keeping it kind of lean and mean during yeah. uh, during quarantine. I've also like lost like uh, about 15 you, pounds. You look really life. skinny. I was about to say your face looks really skinny. Yeah, it might be a little bloated because uh, uh, Ross Marquand came over uh, last night okay. and we had we had social distance uh, beer, so I might be a bit puffy right now. No, no, no. You look very trim. Your face <laughs> is trim. That, do you feel better? What have you been doing? The workout regimen because um, no, no workout regimen. Really? Yeah. I just what is like, it? I just eat less. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. I literally eat everything in sight. And uh, I do class pass. So they have this new thing. If you pay like $10 a month or whatever, you get all these uh, virtual workouts. I'm like, mm -hmm. first, I'm never leaving the house to work out again. Because like, if I and also I can bail in the, in the middle of the class in the middle and no one's going to be like judgy. So I do 10 minutes of a 30 minute workout and I walk out. That's like, fine. Who's going to know? And I have, but it's, uh, I did it three times in two weeks and I haven't noticed any change. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, at a certain point, just working out is just for health, you know, like, uh, I know, I know. We know get, that's the thing. We it's like, I work, I, like, I'm, you know, years ago I was seeing a trainer and I was just like, I was like, man, I can't, I was building muscle, but I couldn't, like, I looked the same. 
And, uh, and then it turns out it's like, oh, if I just don't eat like, you know, three burritos a day, it turns <laughs> out. Is it just eating out less, do you think? Or is it eating less? Because for me, it's all dessert. And I don't yeah. know about what your Achilles heel is as far as uh, whether it's carbs or whatever. And you guys are vegan, right? Or vegetarian? Uh, vegan, uh, but I eat, I eat fish. Like I, we don't need to, we, like uh, neither. She's vegan? completely vegan. Yeah, pesca vegan. But like uh, we don't do like dairy or anything like that. Uh, yeah. So I guess dairy is a big old, big old bloaty, but also uh, gluten, you know, like just carbs. Yeah. And well, you know, I drink beers. So. Oh, that's, okay. That's where, and that's kind of like when I started to kind of think about it i was just like i was like oh what am i what do i want to spend those calories on you know beer. so like you want to just remove it to yeah beer. yeah exactly because i gotta you, find some happiness during these times you know I've, I've never had a whole beer i've only sipped a beer like three sips of a beer in my whole life because to me it literally it tastes to me like i'm eating bread it feels like the most heavy dense it's almost like a solid to me when i eat it what kind of beer like, was it well, it was Will Wheaton. He was trying to get me to do it, and it was the, like, the, was it his Woot Stout? Yeah, it might yeah, have been. that's a th that's a thick beer. Like I don't like stouts or you know any of those. Kind. That's that's stout. a real thick. That's like you're drinking you know thick cold soup. Yeah, and I have I have a problem like with Vichy Soir and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. With what? What? One more time. Vichy Soir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Vichy Soir. Mm. Oh, I have yeah. a problem with the busy I, I don't particularly like a thick, you know, that, that sort of like, it's kind of like the uncanny Valley between uh, instant mashed potatoes and a smoothie. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's just a little. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I get that, but uh, so are you not like, um, well, what's your take on tomato juice or kind of a vegetable juice? Mm, no. Oh, no, no. I like, Okay, I like I like the tomato juice like from the can. It, it's like you're a vampire. You're that's blood. That's so positive to me. Yes, yeah. But I, I do like. Have you been to Beverly Hills Juice on Beverly? And this is this has become a very specific LA podcast, you guys. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a juice place called Beverly Hills Juice. It's not even in Be Beverly Hills, but it's delicious. It's the most fresh, wonderful juice. And they do have a banana mana shake that I. That's my basically my banana uh, mana. It's called a banana mana shake and it has a frozen banana in it. And I always get the ginger green, you know, like celery, kale, shard, yeah. um, all the, uh, and then I put a banana and some sunflower butter in it and they blend it up. Takes all, mm. it takes all the green taste out of it. It just exactly. becomes a sweet thing. You get all the, you get all the benefits. Mm hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what is, so what is you guys' indulgence besides, what is Deanna's indulgence? Is it beer? Uh, no, no. I mean, she'll she'll have beer here and there. It's um, what is our indulgence? Uh, I don't know. We just, you know, like pizza. Every once in a while, we'll do like pizza. Oh yeah, pizza's yeah. really good. There's have you? Great, said, yeah. No, no. Go. There's great vegan uh, pizza down at this place, a uh, Purgatory Pizza in downtown LA. Oh. Yeah, so we like you know, that. have you been to? So I don't know about you, but ha, um, has your feed changed? Has your social feed changed since quarantine? Because mine is completely different. Oh, really? Well, it's all full of um, cheap old houses from uh, Europe and the U.S. So I, you know, if I wanted to move to Iowa and spend eighty thousand dollars, could get a real nice Victorian fixer upper. Sure. And um, and then in Greece, I could buy like a two one in the Greek Isles. You know, why not? Why aren't we doing this? I'm not doing it now, but I I think about it all the time getting out of here. I've. Uh... I, you know, I wouldn't know what the, what I'm seeing in the feed. Cause I've been off of uh social media. Uh, I've been off like Twitter and Instagram for the most part for about like, uh, almost four months now. Are like you kidding? Months, so. Yeah. I did not know that like completely off. Yeah. That's like I, I, on Instagram, I would pop on to like promote like Deanna's, you know, fundraiser. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I haven't, I haven't been on it. I just like popped on posted the thing and left. So how do you feel? I feel great. I feel <laughs> really, really good. I feel like there's a clarity in my brain that wasn't there before. I feel like I, I, uh, I, I would every day, like I'd just be refreshing and looking and getting into arguments and or yeah. getting angry about stuff. And then I, I took it all off my phone, locked myself out. And then I found myself just, um, reading books and like, you know, and, and like, you know, just spending time living. being, being fine living and like feeling good about like just the right now, because all that stuff is just anxiety inducing. It's all, you know, yeah. and it's, uh, and just with the way the world is, it's like, it could, you could easily just get wrapped up in it. Yeah. And so I, I love it. I highly recommend it. And it's funny too, because when I tell people I'm off, they go, well, it's good to take a break. 
like uh, like we're junkies. Like I'm talking to fellow junkies. They're like, yeah, you got to dry up every once in a while, man. Uh, but then, but you're not. You're coming back. You're coming back, right? Um, but I don't know. I don't know how much I will uh, because Will, will uh, yeah. has never been on Twitter since for three years now. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. three years, and he's like, man, I don't know. It doesn't affect my. He's working as much. He is. You know, it's not like a required thing. He and does his thing. Instagram and his and that, Facebook, but yeah, and that's what we like. You know, you and I we talk about that where it's like it's like we feel that we have to be there because you have to be kind of like, Hey, I'm around mm-hmm. in case someone needs, you know, cause in this town, you kind of got to be like, cause oh, there's yeah. so many people and it's like, if someone will just go, Oh, you know who I was just thinking of? It's because they just, you know, flip past a tweet or a picture or something like that. Yeah. 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 But well, I, just, I mean, happier. that's part of it. If you're happier, that's, I mean, I'm in a weird spot because like I'm doing what I'm, I mean, the, la- the other day I, I, I have an RSS feeder because I'm, you know, 800 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have like a Hollywood one. And that's when I started getting super anxiety, like seeing like this person has a deal and this show's going and this one. I was like, yep. oh, no, I can't look at this anymore because mm-hmm. that gave me anxiety. Being online as my cell, you know, just being online. I'm, I'm, I've reapproached it in a way where I'm like, I'm not going to do anything that I feel f- like I'm forcing mm-hmm. just to be out there, you know, like. And I'm doing all the live streaming, which genuinely d- is not stressing me out at all, except for the tech of getting a guest for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm doing some brand deals here and there, so I'm like, oh, I'm this is this is this is worth worth uh, putting time in. But I'm the the whole I, I'm starting to mute a lot of things or unfollow things mm-hmm. where I'm just like, this is not added to my life. The two things that do add to my life are the real estate. For some reason, I just love it and I really want to live in Europe. And I'm like. This could be a thing that I say for in 10 years. You know, I might get a little thing in Portugal. And then um, Instagram food. So oh, yeah, yeah. have you like people baking out of their backyards and stuff, mm-hmm. selling sourdoughs and stuff? That's my new jam. And there's a lot of like underground pizza places where you can order like on a Saturday and then it'll, they'll bring it to you Wednesday or whatever. Like it's super hard to do. I don't yeah. know if you've heard of this. Yeah, I like. I actually, a, a friend of mine uh, said was telling me about it. You know, that's the craziest thing because I'm not. I don't find. Do you realize how much of your news or finding out about stuff at all, like um, you get from just being on Instagram or mm-hmm. Twitter? And it's and a lot of it's not even like ad based. A lot of it's just like people like saying like you know. Yeah. Like it's like, hey, we're di- like uh, this thing. I'm excited about this thing coming out. Or has anyone watched this thing? And you know, it's. Um, but well, where else do you know. get your news? Like for me, I follow a lot of political accounts, mm-hmm. but then I won't, uh, I'll watch the local news. And I'll be like, oh, really? That's happening? So like the bubble that I'm in is super, like it's tailored to what I like. But at the same time, there's a lot of stuff I'm missing as a person that could expand my worldview versus like just repeat it. And I think that's a problem of everybody on the internet. Well, there's, there's, I think uh, this idea that, um, it's become, uh, you have, everyone's like, well, you have to stay informed. You have to stay informed. And, Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this, uh, social, uh, pressure to, you know, know about everything. And you see that a lot, like a lot of what, what about isms kind of stuff online where it's like, you go, Oh, uh, black lives matter. And they they go, Oh, but what about Chicago? Or it's like, Oh, this, like this thing happened to these migrants. It's like, well, what you don't care about the, the Palestinians. Like, it's like, it's like there's always going to be something like that. And there's a lot of uh, pressure to stay informed. But I think it's like, but it's like I can only control what I can control. It's But uh, also you, it you know? sort of encourages you. There's a part of it where it's like encouraging you not to have an opinion of your own because you're like, okay, well, if I do this, this kind of person, this person will be offended and this person would be offended. And well, if you look at it this way, then you really shouldn't have this opinion. And you kind of second guess yourself into taking a position about anything in the world, mm-hmm. um, which maybe just I'm, I'm not complaining about that. Um, you know, I'm not going to be like cancel culture sucks. Like, mm-hmm. um, cancel culture is bringing to light things that have been wrong in the past that we mm-hmm. now are like, this is unacceptable. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing, but we go through a certain transition where we're unaware of other people's point of view. And I think that's where we're all at. And so we're thinking from other people's point of view and it sort of degrades our ability to center in on what we 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 believe truly because we're really busy seeing everything from other people's points of view because of social media. And so it's confusing, but maybe it's possible to get through it or maybe it's just terribly destructive. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just think about, um, and this is, this is going to sound really silly, but I've been, yeah, right now I'm reading a book called Already Free and it's a, it's a say, uh, psychotherapist um, that also uh, is a, a Buddhist teacher. Um, oh, cool. And the whole book is about like blending those two um, thought processes and ways of living life. And, 
I'm reading a lot of kind of stuff like that, like, you know, Buddhist teachings and stoicism and all this kind of stuff. And is this something that has been a latent interest for you? Or is this something that you've always been interested in? Uh, do you have like p p other like resources besides books that you're adhering to? Um, I watch a lot of School of Life stuff uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty fun um, thing. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of new. You know what it was? Like my therapist, she's a we were just talking about the stuff. She's like, you should read the book, uh, you know, the, uh, the four agreements and, uh -huh. uh, by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I was just like, she's like, it's real quick, but I think you'll like, it. it'll give us something to talk about, which is like, cause I like, guess she noticed that I was kind of, you know, ping ponging around a very similar idea of, uh, self and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, you know, a lot of the, just the, the, this year and, um, the lockdown and a lot of that stuff has made me yeah. kind of, uh, start to, um, not second guess, but really think about why I do entertainment mm -hmm. stuff and why I did comedy. And, uh, I almost got to a point where I thought like, I was like, I was like, I think I've just kind of been, um, I, I started doing comedy at 20 years old and I think I had to solidify what my personality or my take on things were mm -hmm. at that age, which is ridiculous. Cause I'm, you know, a late bloomer to start with and you're not really fully formed as, yeah. you know, a 20 year old, but I, I, so I, and I tended to, I realized exploit my own life and my own, uh, story for the, uh, entertainment of others. And I, and I, I think I was getting to a point where it, was, it became kind of an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. I uh, don't, I mean, believe yeah. me, you've heard me complain over the last several, ever since I left my company, I'm like, who am I? And then mm -hmm. you feel this need to chase what you were because people liked you as that. But I always made an analogy of, that's why I wrote my book. Um, uh, you're never we uh, embrace your weird because I, f I started to feel, especially after having a baby, you have this sort of life shattering event that, that and I think, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going through that with quarantine because we're not going to change our lives radically unless something comes in and blows it up. Right. One mm -hmm. day somebody's not happy and they're like, you know what? I'm going to move to another country. I'm going to change professions. I'm going to do something. No, you have to have a disaster come into your, you know, mm -hmm. and just like bulldoze everything over for you to be able to get out of the pattern of your behavior and get some self-reflection. And so we're all come out stronger for this on the other end, hopefully, uh, because we'll get some perspective on the why of why we do things because mm -hmm. uh, you're like me, you're like, we just, we let a lot of things go and aren't, we're happy for them. So we're like, well, why are we living with these things in our lives that make us unhappy? Right. Correct. Yes, exactly. And like, like you said, we both have, you, you want to move to Portugal. Like I've been wanting to move to London for years. And, <gasps> I know, I know. And you, you know, can do and, that. Yeah. And like, you know, it's funny just the other day you're talking about like, I was on a website, I was just on like, you know, the uh, like uh, flat rentals uh, mm -hmm. like uh, and like just looking around different neighborhoods and seeing what the prices were. And you know, a lot of my friends, and I'm sure you got some friends too, like they're leaving Los Angeles. And uh, I have four or five who've just moving, they're buying houses and oh, you know, like Nebraska and Idaho and Montana. And it's like, you know, if people want me, they can fly me in, but, and we're all going to be auditioning on zoom. Like, why do we need to be here? Right. And necessarily. Yeah. yeah. And I helped some friends move up to uh, Portland um, mm -hmm. and like, you know, you're, you're up there and there's that, like, you know, I know other people like Kyle Kinane. I know a lot of comedy friends, my friend Duncan uh, just moved to Arizona it's yeah. like, and it's, yeah, it's, you know, and I've like, it's, it's funny. I realize that most of the jobs I've gotten acting wise have been from like self tape auditions anyway. I don't, don't think, and, I don't and they're not going to have room. dirty actors come in and read lines for them for callbacks. Mm -hmm. Like this is why I invested in this nice camera. Yeah, I need uh, to get one of those nice cameras. I will uh, hook you up with all the stats, okay, buddy? Oh, okay, cool, thanks, Brie. You're welcome. Okay, okay, <laughs> keep up. But like, if if you can audition like this, why in the world do you need somebody to go in physically to do all this? Also, uh, who knows what the future? I know people are shooting now, but they're like cutting out all the smaller parts. They're doing mm -hmm. all this stuff, so it's like the. All of us need to look to other places to not only be an artist, but also do our art. And it might change to something else at the end of the day. But as long as you're happy doing it versus miserable, which I've noticed myself being miserable over the mm -hmm. years, um, that's not helping me. And it's not helping my baby. And it's not just it's a waste of time, man. Yeah. You know, we we yeah, we, we've talked about it's like this is most of our conversations are really just about <laughs> like this. Um which is, but it's like, it's great. Cause it's, I, you know, I don't really have a lot of people I can, you know, like my other like showbiz buddy is Kumail and it's like kind of hard to like talk to a guy that's like, you know, yeah. in a Marvel movie being like, it's like, yeah, I don't know if like this business is for me. Uh, and yeah. like, uh, and like, he's just like, Oh no, just, you know, try, just keep going. You know? It's, yeah. It's not, it's not, well, it's just so terribly difficult and so much of a luck thing. And when you've been into it, I mean, like, you're right. Like coming up on 20 years, like, you know, 
18 years, 17 years of just hitting the pavement and going out there and being rejected as a person. I'm like, am I old enough to just like who I am and believe that I am worthy? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, we really just, that's what I've been trying to figure out is like why I do it. And, you know, like in losing weight and, you know, getting LASIK and there's a lot Did of you get things. LASIK? I got LASIK a couple of years ago. Yeah. What? Yeah. How did you I not know how, that? I don't know. You just, I just stopped wearing glasses and you never I asked. don't look at your face that much. Yeah. No, why would you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how was that? Was that creepy? Yeah. It was gnarly. You smell your yeah. eye burning. Nope. Do not it. doing it. Not yeah. doing it. Not doing but it, it. But it's great. I really love it. I really love not having glasses. Um, uh, but it was, but it, it's because I got them so young and they became, my whole mm -hmm. personality grew up around it. And when I see yeah. pictures of you as a teenager, like I wish I had one to show right now, you guys, although audio listeners, you don't care. Um, yeah. you looked quite a bit different. I looked quite, <laughs> I looked quite different. As I was a like, child. whoa, is that you? I mean, yeah. for real, I was, are you looking up a picture because you can see show... if I can find any, uh, quick one. Uh, well, here's, uh, yeah. here's, here's me at about like, uh, see if you can see that. <laughs> That doesn't look anything like you. Yeah. It looks like That's... the kid from Little Rascals who bullies other kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, let's see where else. Uh, um, oh, oh, my God. Do I have any others in here? Oh, boy. Yeah. I don't. Oh, here's here's a, here's one. Yeah. There's, there's a. Oh, my God. This doesn't look anything like you. Yeah. Do you notice Kumail? I don't mean to. I'm not going to cast shade on Kumail because mm. he's amazing. Um, but, <laughs> but he was kind of dorky. Yeah. But when, he's, he's a dork guy. When people tell you you're a sex symbol, something changes inside of you and you get hot. Do you know what yes. I'm saying? He has a smolder now where I'm like, where'd that smolder come? You didn't, that was a lately developed smolder. He's been working on that smolder. Like, you really? know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, here for sure. Right. Yeah. Here's, here's a picture of my family and it look, I look like their accountant. <laughs> bigger than your family yeah i don't know and there's like Are yeah you... there's like my brother my dad and me what is they, that? Look, they look like they're from hawaii yeah they do wow dude that, i mean that much kind of like i was i was once told by um a casting director who i heard later sabotaged a lot of people's auditions because he would tell you one thing and then he would he would basically rig it so the person he wanted to have the part would come in and do the best read and they would tell bad direction to the other people on callbacks. Ouch. He did that to me. Um, so anyway, he told me, he's like, your outsides don't mean your insides. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. Does it mean I'm prettier on the outside than I act in the inside or vice versa? Like yeah. I, I honestly have never figured it out. Wow. But um, yeah, it's, it's stuck with me for many, it was win a date for Tad, for Tad Hamilton. Oh, win a date with Tad Hamilton. I remember yeah, that. It was between me and Sarah Rue and the girl who got it, um, who was on Once Upon a Time, who's amazing. But yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> want me to trash a cast director? God knows I don't need to alienate people, but he... Uh, <laughs> it's just a rumor, too. It might have just been somebody who told me that because they were bitter. Well, so, it's also like, it's like the casting directors trying to do their best, you know, because exactly. that's their job. They're directing, you know. Jennifer Goodwin, she's great. And she probably mm -hmm. was better because I literally would have so many panic attacks. I couldn't even say my words. So probably she deserved it way more than me. Oh, she was, uh, also, she was also in um, Walk the Line. Uh-huh. She's yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Let's not talk about her anymore. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow, we've talked a long time. This is good, you guys. Having a guest really works. Um, listen, let's talk about things we've consumed. Now, you've already talked about mm -hmm. the four... Was that four, the, four? the four agreements and already free. Now, are these considered like cult books or are they intellectual books? They're intellectual books. Well, four agreements is probably uh, closer to a cult book uh, <laughs> just because it's a bit it's a bit woo woo. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, you know, it like it, 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 you know, veers towards the secret kind of territory. Um, but it is a but it is basic, basic um, things to keep in your head. Uh, uh -huh. Like, uh, like, you know, not to. And it do, it did help me a lot, just kind of like with you know, d just my my journey of trying to get rid of the self. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, yeah, then uh, what else am I reading? Um, I mean, I love. Listen, I wouldn't be here without the secret, for real, because the yeah. secret inspired the woman's group that I joined that made me write the guild. Oh wow! So I would not. Yeah, and then you know, the secret people got arrested. I guess they. <laughs> oh, they did. Oh, yeah. 
I think they went to jail or something. Like oh for real, God. they're really like crooks. I think Jeez. you know what? I'm like talking out my ass. Yeah, yeah. So, they're somebody, not the... somebody fact check everything I'm saying. I, yeah. I heard there was. Are you sure? Like are you just thinking of the the Knicks VM? No, no, that one was. Oh my God, my friend. I started. You know, I had a couple people who were from Vancouver. Were like, I'm in this thing, and I'm like, mm. oh. That's um, yeah. Also, they controlled the local acting class, like Scientology did in the class that I took early in my career here. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't want to don't want to say anything bad about people's belief systems. You believe what you want, but okay, secret arrested. I'm putting I'm looking this up, you guys, because I can't. Um, he was okay, James Arthur Ray, oh. a convicted felon. Wait, wow. wow, is this even? Oh, this is just a guy who got got arrested. <laughs> Does it say why? No, this guy has nothing to do with the secret, but I'm just looking at it. He's I a re- spiritual warrior retreat conceived and hosted by him in Arizona where two people died from a sweat lodge exercise. So Jesus. this has nothing to do with the secret. I'm t- I totally- Yeah. Wow. What way to throw the secret under the bus. One of the, okay. One of the guys from there did kill a bunch of people in a sweat lodge. Okay. Namek. Okay. So that was. Um, I didn't that know was, the secret was like a group. I always just kind of thought it was a, like a, you know, a thought process. I thought it was a woman. Um, U.S. motivational speaker, manslaughter, three people. Oh, that's so sad. God. Okay, well, terrible. on the upper room. Okay, so um, you've been reading that, and they've been reading. Have you been reading Stoic ph- philosophy as well? Uh, a little bit, uh, just stuff like articles online. Um, yeah, the other one I'm uh, already free is the one where, where it's the the, the therapist that uh, mm-hmm. combines uh, already Buddhist free stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. When I went to, uh, have you been to Thailand or no, uh, no. Asia? I went there and I came back and I was really focused on um, Buddhist uh, theology and just like the lifestyle because there's something about the, I mean, maybe it was just my idyllic sort of experience of it, but like um, going to so many temples and things like that, there was sort of a appreciation of the now that I really was like, wow, this is incredible. I don't know. I don't mean to generalize about all people in Thailand or all Buddhists or whatever, but it felt very um, centering in a way. And so I investigated and then I kind of signed up for some medication, uh, meditation classes around town. Nice. There were a lot of cults in this town. Yes. <laughs> they will not stop calling you if you send them an email mm-hmm. or give them a phone number. It's like, can you talk? The Rishi is here. The Rishi needs you to come. And I'm like, what's going on? Uh, it, it really got a little <laughs> any any or any organized you know um yeah. anything like that is just gonna it's gonna have bad stuff but like yeah. the, but like yeah the buddhist thought process is uh, is it's pretty great and it does when when you feel more now like you do feel happier yeah oh for sure and i i've been reading a ton as as the listeners who probably don't care know mm. i've been reading a lot of ancient greek philosophy That's right. roman philosophy and like if you read the original stoic philosophers they're actually you can take a lot of really interesting things out of there, you know, like mm-hmm. um, a lot of it is about, you know, how you treat your slaves and women are dirt and, mm-hmm. you know, really problematic stuff. Sure. But at the center of it, there are some really interesting philosophies that if you take, you know, if you ditch the 2000 uh, year old uh, horribleness, uh, there are some interesting <laughs> things there. So anyway, uh, <laughs> the, the, th- the three books I've been reading are, um, I actually got a preview copy of V.E. Schwab's new The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Mm. And I'm actually going to be doing a book stop, you guys, on an uh, interview with her. So I, I had to read it, but I wanted to read it because I love her work. She wrote um, uh, a couple of amazing series, fantasy series. And this is kind of like The Time Traveler's Wife, and I feel like it's going to super blow up. So if anybody likes any of that, pre-order that. And I've been reading a book called Little by Edward Carey, and it's one of the best books I've ever read. Oh, wow. It's like set during... In uh, 18th century France, and it's about this little strange little girl that gets involved in these wax figurines, and it's really and it, it's like a, a a finalist for so many awards. It's just the writing, you know. Some books you skim, and then some books you want to read every word. Mm-hmm. This is that one. So nice. those are two I've I've been reading, and I don't really read a lot of nonfiction, which I unless it's ancient history. Mm-hmm. But I went through my self help. I mean, I read every self help book and every yeah. biography. So I, don't I know. read a lot. Of, yeah, I read a lot of like right now. The, another book I'm I'm listening to is uh, uh, it's Carol Burnett's book, but it's uh, specifically her talking about uh, the Carol Burnett show and like putting it together and the writing. Oh, and the, fascinating! And writing. Yeah, it's um, it's like I it got it through my Libby app, which is great. Everyone should get the Libby app. Yes, I use Libby for my because do- my daughter goes through about a hundred books a day. Mm-hmm. So if you guys support your local library, yeah, uh, order from Booklist.com if you have to order a book. 
Yeah, I did called, order uh, from yeah. in such good company. Oh, great. Yeah. And um, I mean, her and Gary Shandling, like, I think Gary Shandling, maybe not the best guy, I guess, especially with women, but um, mm-hmm. amazing things he did. Like, if you watch his shows, they were always they were always so innovative. So great. And so imagine, I mean, that's where the Simpsons came from. Mm-hmm. I remember well, as a kid being like, I'm in love with this man. I'm like, oh, that's very bad. You're probably six years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little creepy. Um, but anyway, okay, so those yeah. are books. What about TV shows? Have you I've been keeping up? You guys are super big movie people. We're big movie people. Uh, but as far as TV, um, I May Destroy You is really incredible. What is that? What is that? Uh, it's uh, Did you ever see the show Chewing Gum? It's uh, the yep. girl. Uh, What's well, a British uh, girl that if you saw her, you'd recognize her. She pops up in a lot of stuff. Okay. It's a show on HBO, um, okay. and it it's it's pretty heavy. It does. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna read. I read an article about her. How she totally held out for like she held out for like the deal of a lifetime because of this. And I hear it's incredible. <gasps> it's a really really good show, and it's it's pretty heavy. It's it's uh in it, it, you know dives into the repercussions uh, socially and emotionally of a uh, uh, date rape uh, and sexual assault. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you know, it's we, me and D were watching uh, I'll be gone in the dark. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, which is also a really brutal, uh, but well put together show about uh-huh. the golden state killer. And oh, also, yeah, yeah, I need to watch that because of Pat and I need to watch yeah. it. It's supposed to make yeah, uh, but like we start with you, and then we watched one episode of I May Destroy You, and we're like, we're like, let's wait on this. This is maybe a bit. <laughs> Like D was fine, but I was just like, I was like, this is a lot of violence towards women. I got, I got to take a break. You got to watch this. a lot, a little House Hunters, basically. You got a yeah. little uh, House Hunters who's boosh. Maybe the floor is lava, perhaps. No, the floor is lava. So you know what I actually like? What um, because I uh, auditioned for a part in Mixed Dish, and I had never seen, oh. I never seen Blackish, I had never seen Mixed Dish. So mm-hmm. just to get like you know the tone of the show, you know, you do a little research, and yeah. so I watched a couple episodes of Mixed Dish, and then just spent the entire rest of the night watching that show it's very it? very good it's like a feel-good family show that's also very funny but it I feels like for one of those. i think that was one of my last auditions where i walked out and i was like i can't do this ever again yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was one of the people in his it was one of the people in his um maybe it wasn't that show i think it might have been i don't know but grown-ish. it was terrible yeah. it might have been grown yeah i mean it was so bad and i like <laughs> I would, tr- I trembled. So, and they were just people, I think expect me to come in and actually do a competent job. And they're just like, <laughs> what just happened? Like she yeah. just fell apart. I'm like, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. It's like once in like, that's, the, I'm the same way. It's like, it's like, once I have the job, I'm fine. Oh it's yeah, the, for sure. Yeah. But it's on, you know, s- on, yeah. on, on set. We had such a good time. You're lo- Yeah. Great. You're like having a good time. You're so like in the moment, mm-hmm. so fun to work with. Yeah. And then, but that audition, that's why I'm kind of hoping like if I just have to send in tapes, like, I can do that. Like that's what I do on, on a regular basis. I sit in front of my computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, is yeah. that made my name? That's yeah. That's like a, it's, I did it like the dumbest thing recently. Well, the, to end that self tape because I've just been trying to have fun with it. Yeah. And like the the you know the part is it's like it's a guy talking to another guy about a car that just came back to town. Mm-hmm. And then um, I end I just instead of just doing a normal slate for for people like it's like where you just go hi I'm Joan Ray Rodriguez I. Uh, six foot four and I'm out of Los Angeles, California, you know, that like, you know, just yeah, yeah, info. Yeah. So typical thing. Typical. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, so instead of just doing that, I just, uh, I did like, I edited a little thing where it just like flashes into uh, pictures of me next to my Volkswagen bug <laughs> drinking a beer. And then I had the song, uh, the boys are back in town by thin Lizzy playing. Oh my God. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. I would love that as a producer. If I saw that, I'd be like, this person put a lot of work into this. Yeah, it just it was just one of those things where I'm like, this this is could be this could be funny, you know. And yeah. it, made me, it made me happy. That's what I'm trying to get better at with almost everything I'm doing is just like, what's gonna make me happy about this process right here, right now? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I I'm so bad. I'm right now I'm doing a book proposal and I got some notes and I worked all summer on it and I got a lot of notes on it, and I'm like, oh, you got to tear that thing apart. And like, that's just the process. But I get really down about it. And I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. And so I guess the challenge, and I did say this in my own book. So I'm like, what mm-hmm. is that chapter where you gave that good advice to other people that you're not <laughs> taking right now? <laughs> um, that I need to find the fun in it and I need to play around and do bad work until I find the fun angle on it. So, yeah. Oh, that's what I read recently. I read uh, um, You're Never Weird on the Internet. You read, oh, you read my book? Yes, I read your book on, oh, on that's Libby. Weird. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. I, I, I didn't. I was like, I wasn't sure if I should tell because it is kind of weird. 
It is a little weird. Well, I've read, I've read many of my friends is I've read people that I know's biography and it is weird knowing so much about them. Like, you're like, did you mean to tell me that thing about the high school? <laughs> yeah. And then like, I'm not sure. Like, it's like now, like what you've told me and what I read in the book. Um, it's all lies. Yes. It's the, all lies. The book is a lie. Basically. Yes. The book is alive. Um, That's your next book. It's just a, yeah. The book is the book was alive. So basically, yeah. the sequel would be like things I didn't tell you in my last biography. Yeah. Um, no, but, that's the thing about me. It's like what nobody could blackmail me. I'm just like okay, whatever. Yes. It's out there. <laughs> well, what's the um? What's what's it's uh if uh, like the the way to be the like the most powerful person is to uh always tell the truth. Yes, it's true. It's really true. Yeah. You know, and you don't, uh, and I think that's, that's the thing, like a lot of us walk around like hiding, you know, just trying to fit in. And that's like a theme that I, I think I like to, dis- I like to, of course, like, uh, in- encourage people just to be themselves with- without fear. Cause I think that's part of me. I'm always afraid of people seeing the real me in, in a weird way. Yeah. Um, because I've been rejected for that so many times and I was like really sheltered. So I was never accepted for any version of myself until adulthood. So, you know, whatever. It's fine. I'm not going to say. Oh, also Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft Country oh, is yes. so good. It's so, it's, uh, we're, I haven't watched the third episode yet. No, I haven't either. I haven't either. I haven't either. But it's but like, it's, it's crazy. And it's such good. a good book, though. The book was great. And I read it and I was like, oh my God, this has to be a TV show. And they, and I was like, oh my God, the perfect people are making the TV show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, the TV show is amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's so crazy. So good. So yeah. good. And uh, did you ever check out The Great? I know I told you to check out The Great on Hulu. Um, oh, I, I, um, I put it on my queue. Okay. I haven't watched any TV. People who listen to my podcast will know. Like every night I'm either writing with people who, because I have a couple of writing partners who can't work during the day. So like every night is either streaming or that's why I'm moving one of my streams to the daytime stream just because I got to be my baby a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But after she goes to bed and she's being a little B lately and going to bed at nine or 9.15, I'm just like, please, you are three years old. You need to be in bed at seven o'clock, baby. Try to yeah. ruin me. So, <laughs> You're ruining my life. I know. These are great, great parenting tips. My mom tips. told me that one time, but I don't want to ever tell her that. But um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I forget what I was saying. Okay, so what else? What else is gonna? What else are we gonna do here? We're gonna do some questions, you guys. We've almost talked an hour. You haven't been playing any video games, have you? Uh, no, I don't. I don't really play video games. You're not. A, you're not a gamer. No, no. I. It's a. Uh, I, I I've told the story a bunch, but like it's not really a story. It's just like I I messed up and made the wrong decision console wise so much oh. early on, where it's like everyone was getting Game Boys. I was like I want an Atari Lynx, and then it went out. And then um, <laughs> and then like you know when it came time for like uh, when PlayStation came out, I was like uh uh-uh, uh I want a Panasonic 3DO. <laughs> No, so basically, I, you, know, you can do like a, a Google Stadia right now. Yes, I just like it's you yeah. know I'm the guy that got a Zoom, even though like oh. I didn't, but I would have been. If I could have afforded like a iPod or a Zoom, I, I probably would have ended up getting the Zoom. I have to tell you, the Zooms were pretty good. The Guild was one of the uh, premier titles on the Zoom, and it was actually lovely, and the screen was really nice, and <laughs> nobody used it. Nobody used it. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's like, so I didn't play for a long time. Every once in a while, I'll, like, you know, because I, I have, I got, I have an Xbox Three Six or an Xbox One, yeah. and, I, and every once in a while, I'll like just play Mortal Kombat and be bad at it. I think the fun, you know, the ones that have been the most fun for me are the ones where I get to play with other people. Like this new one, Fall Guys. Like I'm a dick. Well, also Fall Guys. Okay, I never wanted to be good at a video game except for World of Warcraft because I felt like I was not gonna let I was gonna let everybody down if I wasn't the best warlock I could be. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Fall Guys, for some reason, I am triggered into like wanting to be good. Like mm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like super competitive person. I really don't care if I win or lose, and that's the thing. I feel like I have power. I'm like, okay, be get a, get get ahead of me. I don't care. Yeah. But um. There's something about this game that I personally want to be good myself. It's like a reputation thing. And I've only had that drive with the violin and uh, billiards. And that's oh, pretty that's much right. it. Those are my sports. Wow. <laughs> that's inc- Yeah. I just, like, I've never really been that like competitive. Uh, yeah. And so it's just, and it's like, and it might just be laziness. I no, think that's what I don't it kind of. So. I think no. because I think some people, I mean, I'm a bit, I'm very ambitious, but I'm always trying to meet myself. I think a lot of other people uh, foment a lot of jealousy and rage and competition because they want to be better than other people specifically. And I play mm-hmm. board games with some people who are like, do you should be banned from board game playing because yeah. they're so freaking awful and they want to win so bad, you know? Yeah. So, all right. Well, we're going to ask a couple right. questions, you guys. Thank you for being here, you guys. Um, Jonah, where can, uh, we're not leaving now, but I just want to give a shout mm-hmm. out to, do you have anything you'd like to tell the audience before a lot of them leave at the end? Oh, <laughs> before uh, we leave, 
yeah. I don't know. Watch, uh, watch Mystery Science Theater uh, on Netflix. Yeah, and then you can see us, and then also watch us in uh, in Puka Lives. In Puka Lives, absolutely. And are you still doing your COVID uh, podcasting? Oh man, you know I. Uh, I you were ahead I, of the curve with that one. That I was. was like day two. And I like built up a whole bunch. I like recorded a ton, and then uh, uh, the file like that they were all in got corrupted. Oh and, like, no! None of them, none of them worked, and I, it kind of just. Also, I realized I was maybe doing it for the wrong reason. I think I was just kind of being like scrambly, like, "What am I gonna do? Hey, I'm still here." And then yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't doing it for the right reason. But uh, me and Matt Myra have been talking about uh, maybe oh, uh, doing I something. Love you guys together. Oh, I love yeah. Matt. Is he doing yeah. well? He's doing well. He's you know he's he's a producer on the Goldberg, so he's he's been oh, back yeah, at work. So yeah. At work. Oh, that's, I don't know how, would you want to have, I mean, I guess you, would you take a job right now on a strange set to be an actor? I don't know if I would. I would. Yeah. God, I, would I mean, they, they, they changed the, uh, you know, SAG changed the, uh, the, the, Oh um, yeah. We have the, to get health insurance. Yes. So. I know. So we kind of have to work. Yeah. Ooh, it's really tough out there right now. It's tough to be an actor, man. Always tough, but like never tougher than this, I think. Because yeah. everything's going to Canada because they know how to actually run it, run a, run a ship. Okay, yeah. we're gonna do four questions before we end. All right. Stephanie okay. Houston asks, starting any new hobbies? I'm trying my hand at sewing costumes. Sent 17th century corset dress will be my first. Okay, Steph, way to way to make us yeah. seem like scrub. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Hmm. Well, my hobby is streaming i guess but i'm turning yeah. it into my job again which is i what i always do but i like which you, yeah which you, you always do that but i love it and if i can do my hot the problem is i just need to regulate it and not tr not turn it into a monster but always treat it like you said you were doing the podcast for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. i don't want to be streaming for the wrong reasons like you know i'm, I'm not playing the latest game because it's so popular i'm only going to play games that i enjoy i'm not going to do a sponsored stream unless i'm like there's something in this game that I really enjoy and it'd be a fun time with some friends or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's exactly how you should do it. That's how you should, how to approach everything. The only thing I've been trying to do is, uh, um, I saw you with the guitar. Yeah. I, I mean, the guitar is something I always do, but I got a, I got a melodic recently. What? Um, what is that? <laughs> no. What? What? Yeah, I just like having instruments around. That is a cool, but what is that? I've never seen that before. Oh, it's a, it's a melodica. Very popular in uh, dub reggae. What? Yeah. It's like a keyboard. <laughs> See, still working on it. Your hands look so big compared to that thing. They are, they are like, big. I forgot just... how big you were, and then I'm just like, you look like... <laughs> that's amazing that's a yeah. really that's a really like so dub reggae what is that even i don't even know is no there worries. a special okay right. <laughs> next question sierra delta asks who would you cast in a gender swap version of well it's basically supernatural but like who would you ca cast in your roles jonah as a gender swap okay so Wait. like if you were in, oh, in mst3k like if you're going to gender right. swap you in MST3K, who would that be? Oh, um, just uh, who? Who would be, you know? I, I, it's funny because in an interview I talked about this, and I think like I always liked you taking over, but it would be your character taking over. But I always thought it'd be cool if like you, you know, Kinga gets like knocked in the head, and uh -huh. then she like loses, like she forgets that she's evil, and oh, then that'd be like, <laughs> and so then it's like it's the like it's the bubbly you know fun Felicia like would be a great oh it would be the nice Felicia yeah yeah exactly I, 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 in a, I just took a picture in a in a sort of a like a tool suit and posted yeah. on Instagram for my friend I can do that yeah but uh, it's a like gender so it doesn't does it have to like match like because it's like you know I think uh, also mm -hmm. you know Kate Mikuchi would be a great uh, oh you know Mikuchi would be a good version of you like totally like literally shrunk down like you just like compressed mm -hmm. in a press. Calliope is obsessed with knowing how things work. So she's like, how do they make uh, toilet paper? How do they make paint? And quite frankly, I don't know how anything in this world is made. That's what yeah. I've... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so fun when you're like, you're like, this dumb thing's broken. You're like, you don't even know how to make the thing that's encased nope. in. Nope. Do you know how to make a self uh, uh, inking stamp? No, I just learned the other night. It's very yes. complicated. It's very do you know how to make toilet paper? No. No. I got like, you know, like years and years ago, I bought like a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle 
and it was working fine. And then like, I was like, yeah, but if it, if it needs work, it'll help. It'll I'll teach myself how to do it. I haven't been able to, I don't know. It's like, I look at the engine and go, try it now. <laughs> I think you could probably learn how to do it. Cause my dad is a plastic surgeon and he's literally trying to fix the turn signal on his BMW SUV by himself. Wow. And he had to, like some kind of weird electronic pack to do it and i'm like is this is this is his hobby i guess yeah. like fix these because i'm like why are you under your house installing a sump pump like by yourself it's like it's relaxing to him and i'm like that's the kind of dad i have and that's probably why i am my, the way i am <laughs> i would love i would like to say that my equivalent um in like supernatural would be like damian lewis because he's such a hot redhead mm -hmm. but it's probably ripper grint you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> I mean, I hate to put myself down, but like the, Come the, on. it would be no. Michael Rappaport. Oh no. <laughs> no. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, next to last question. Um, we have MST3K temple. I see who's in the chat. Hello. I'm a compulsive collector and I hang on to everything. Are there any favorite pieces of memorabilia you have saved from your career? Yeah, hmm. I, I got some here. Um, you did you steal it off the set or do you actually just have it? No, I wanted to steal so much stuff off the yeah. set, but I yeah. didn't. I think they ended up like selling them. Uh, here, I'm going to get up. Hold on real quick. Okay. Uh, you're not leaving. Putting yourself down. Rupert is great. Yes, you're totally right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to look at chat, you guys. Sorry, audio listeners. Rupert Grin is amazing. It's just like he's not a sex devil necessarily, right? I, I mean, I'm, a I'm such a Hermione, uh, Hermione, mm -hmm. Harry kind of thing. Har Harry Miney. Fan right. that I just can't even with Rob. Oh, what were you going to show us, Jonah? So this is the uh, the back of my chair. Oh, I have a lot of chair backs. Those are important. They're really strangely this my, important. It's my first one. My first one I've what? ever done. Yeah, That's and then um, and then here's a uh, uh, this is for when we were doing the like last live tour. It was the my the jacket. Oh, that's great. That jacket is nice. Yeah, Every time nice you wear jacket. that. Like, Nice jacket. It's a nice jacket. And then um, this is uh, one of the sketches we did for Hidden America uh, with Art Marine was in it where she ran a restaurant in Seattle uh, called Frasier's. It was a Frasier uh, themed uh, restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's all like uh, the most beloved sitcom in television history. And it's like a full on menu that our art <laughs> department made where he, like appetizers, scrambled eggs with a side of tossed salad, tossed salad with a side of scrambled eggs, pick two, half salad, half scrambled eggs, soups, egg soup, extra soggy eggs with tossed salad, salad soup, <laughs> tossed salad reduction with eggs. And it's just all that. And then there's the Eddie, Daphne's moon, Niles cranium. Oh, that's salad. really out of detail. Did you even show that in the, in the show? It's nope. like, there's uh we, there's an over, there, there's like a shot of like over my shoulder and I kind of like list off a couple, but there's so much in here that wasn't so like, so hold on good. to this. Like a, that's really good. Was that yeah. your idea? Uh, no, Frazier's was actually, uh, that was a pitch from Mike Mitchell from the Doughboys uh, mm -hmm. podcast. He was a writer on the show. He also shows up as a character that, uh, like a Guy Fieri character. Yep. But that was that was his pitch, was Frazier's. Um, he had like, his <laughs> his pitches were always the, like the silliest. Yeah. Like Mike Mitchell, who I love him so much, but it would always be like, that one was Frazier's. Another one of his uh, pitches was uh i was like oh it was like, for the seattle episode was like uh he's like he's like oh uh, there, uh, there's coffee beans but like they're actually like alien uh a eggs and but like pods and uh, uh and then like they, when you grind them they, that's why they're screaming uh, and then i'm like i don't know man and then like he would just go <laughs> put it in the show <laughs> oh, i miss playing with people um yes, okay i know that's, that's what uh, i got in here not kept a lot. I do have my outfit from Talus, the Dragon Age thing. I have a ton of stuff from the guild. I have Zabu's uh, hat actually from the guild I kept. And from, uh, I stole a couple of pins, the general, um, the dynamics uh, from uh, Eureka. I think I have, I think I have something from Buffy I took. I never have taken anything from Supernatural. And that was a mistake because I guess I won't be going back up there because they're finishing this week. So, I did auction off the Talus outfit for Cherry. Um, Rocket Soup, sorry, I didn't mean to look at chat again, but I have another one of them. That was the stunt doubles that I, I have the original, which I will never fit in again because that was almost, uh, it gets under launch, Felicia, uh, gaunt. <laughs> okay, last question. Rocket Soup asks, speaking of, uh, what were some of your first experiences with having fans? Do you remember the first time you signed an autograph or you signed it for, or did it take getting used to? This is a good one, Jonah. I picked all these because I knew you were going to be here. I did. 
Yeah. Of, of actual calling of the, the questions. And please, guys, uh, please send your questions to me on Twitter with hashtag felicitations or go to our Discord channel, discord.gg slash Felicia Day and leave them in the Felicia Adventures channel because our wonderful mods, Sean Sandy Looky Look, collects them for me because I'm a lazy, lazy woman. <laughs> All right, Jonah, what about this? Do you remember anything? Um, I don't know if I really remember um, what, like, the first time. I mean... Uh, yeah, I'm. Oh, you know what? It was. Um, and this is like this. It's not. It's funny. It's just the way it is. It's uh like my band. Uh, when I was like growing up in Hawaii, I was in a band, and uh, it was like right, like right before I moved, and our band got kind of popular. But like, there was like a twelve-year-old kid that was like it was his first punk show, mm -hmm. and he came up to me. He's like, "I'm a drummer. Can I have your drumsticks?" And I'd be oh, like, and I remember being like, "It's like, like you know, I'm I'm like you know, eighteen. I mean, like it's like, but I can't really afford more drumsticks." And <laughs> like, and I'm like. Ugh. Yeah, and I was like, okay, here you go. And he's like, he's like, can you sign them? And uh, oh, and I remember signing them and then handing them over. And this is like a testament to how I've treated everyone that's ever like you know said they're a fan of mine. I mm -hmm. handed them to him. I was just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's such a classic Jonah Ray story. Yeah. <laughs> I um the only thing I remember is my first convention. I was invited to the Burbank Airport to, to the most janky sign signing convention I've ever seen in my life. And I remember being so bowled over that the I Dream of Genie Woman was there and Yama Sumak, who is like a singer from like the 60s, I guess. Um, and there was also the Adams Family Kid. And it was basically oh, a wow. bunch of actors who were like either kid actors in the 50s. And it was then it was like four of us potentials. And I actually have had fans who came up and showed me pictures from that convention where I just look like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> it was actually really fun. I mean, I literally was starstruck because um, the I Dream of Genie Woman. Barbara yeah. Eden, I think. When I was working at uh, Amoeba Records, uh, Weird Al walked in and I took my 15 minute break and uh, like blathered to him about how much I love him. Can we talk uh, about your? You have a cover album of all Weird Al songs, you guys. Can people get that anywhere? Yeah, it's on. It's on Spotify. It's on. You know, it's a, you can get it on vinyl through Asian Man Records, um, and then it's also just on all the streaming services. It's called "You Can't Call Me Al," and it's like uh, just punk versions, just punk songs with Weird Al lyrics. And then also, I do. Um, uh, I do uh, like a version of "Every Country Has a Monster" from the Reptilicus episode. Amazing! Um, you guys yeah. definitely check it out, and the, the vinyl is very cool. Um, and also, are you doing your po you're doing your music podcast stuff? Yeah, we still do um, uh, Jonah Radio. So it's mm -hmm. like you know, if anyone makes music, email us a link to your Bandcamp page, uh, Jonah Radio R A Y D I O at gmail .com. We do it every week. It's just basically it's like a dumb, it's a dumb silly show where me, Neil Mahoney, and Cash Hartzell like we just kind of go through music news and play clips of things we found online or dumb mashups, and it's just a, a, a silly dumb show. And then we also play music that people submit uh, just to kind of help people get the word out for that stuff. That's amazing. See, yeah. uh, Jonah is an amazing person. I'm very lucky to count him as a friend and a coworker many times. We will do it in the future again. I agree. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having um, me. Follow, well, don't follow Jonah because he's not online anymore. <laughs> yeah. Follow him just on Instagram because he does link his stuff. He actually does there. So yes. Um, yes thank perfect. you guys for being here and th tolerating. Any last words, Jonah? Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, you guys, leave me some feedback, whether you liked having a guest. I apologize to the audio listeners because this is not going to be at quite as high quality audio as we usually do. But I wanted to try this out. And hopefully in two weeks, um, I will have a solution for the high quality audio and high quality video at the same time. Please tune into my Twitch channel. I will be uh, streaming Wednesday night, Friday night, and Sunday night. So you guys come back. All right, Jonah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.